This is attempt number three at making this fucking video. And you can tell how pissed I am. Just at other things, but we'll move right the fuck along. Alright, so we've got Elimination Chamber with only four matches advertised. You see, going into this, I thought it was going to be bad because there was another pay-per-view that only had two matches advertised. You have very little amount of matches advertised for your show going into it, and you got to spend $40 fucking dollars, 40 to $45 fucking dollars in a look, ECW December to dismember. Mm. So going into this, I did not have high expectations for the show, but let's get on to the cards, shall we? We're, let's see here, we've got the Raw Elimination Chamber, which the defending champion, the used tampon, Sheamus, going up against John, God knows how stale he is, Cena, Randy Monotone Orton, Triple H, Kofi Kingston, to be honest. I can't really comment on this match too much, because I didn't get to really see much of it, but from what I saw, it didn't seem like a bad chamber, but it just ended really weird. The fact that Sheamus was not even one of the last guys out. Fuck, Kofi and Ted were the first few el eliminated, which in my opinion was bad, because these guys should be going up in the main event status, or at least Kofi should. But God forbid the creative monkeys even think to put these guys into a higher level than when, where they are now. So Cena fucking wins, and Vince McMahon comes out and says, You're gonna have to defend your title tonight against this man! Batista fucking comes out. Whoop the fucking do, and Batista wins the title. Mm-hmm, New Year's Revolution 2006 much? Yeah, anyhow. Alright, so then... This match, I'll say, was okay from what I've seen. I'm not going to give it a complete uh, review on it. I'm not going to give it a complete final thought on it since I didn't really see it. So, there you have it. Then, we had the big red oaf that's lingering into nothingness, Kane, going up against Drew Mack and who the fuck is this guy, Tyre. Alright, really, who the fuck cares about Drew McIntyre? That's what I want to fucking know. Who the fuck cares? Nothing against Drew McIntyre. He's not the worst wrestler on the roster. But who the fuck cares about him? He has no fucking gimmick. Or at least the gimmick that he has is fucking stale as shit. There's nothing about his gimmick that really stands out. Fucking Kane. I love Kane to death. No offense to Kane. I, 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 but fuck, he is a big red oaf. It, it's like... He was sitting... He is in complete nothingness now. He has been in complete nothingness for years. You can use that guy for programs. You just choose not to. This match was boring. There was nothing about it. It was like reading your freaking history book in school. Just boring, and you don't even want to deal with it anymore. It, it was freaking ridiculous. This, this match was just boring, and there was nothing about it that really stood out. Again, Kane being Kane, Drew McIntyre being pretty much nothing somebody that we haven't established who he is and why we should care that he's the IC champion. Really? Drew McIntyre won? Yay? I guess so, because he's at least young and there's still something to go with him, whereas Kane, he's just lingering off down that fucking cliff he's been going down for years now. Oh. Then you had the next match, which was supposed to be, supposed to be, Gail Kim versus Maurice in the finals for the Divas Championship. But no, fucking oinker Vicky Guerrero comes out and starts saying that, no, 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 we're going to postpone this match. We're going to postpone the advertised match and make it a tag team match. So here's what we're going to have. We're going to have you two team up against top, the top two best SmackDown Divas. Now, keep that in mind. Two SmackDown Divas, two of the best. You would think either Mickey James or Beth Phoenix. No, instead we get Michelle fucking flat-chested beanpole McCool, and Layla, I'm just a fucking dancer that has no reason to be in this goddamn business L in this fucking match. This match was like watching somebody ripping their balls off and then fucking just inserting the stick right inside the hole where they ripped their balls off. It was painful to watch, and you don't ever want to see it again. That's what this match was like. It's like, really... Are they not going to understand that Michelle McCool is not over? Nobody cares about Michelle McCool. This match was dead for the fact that Michelle McCool was in control for the most part. Nobody cares about Michelle McCool. Layla L. has some kind of charisma, at least backed into her repertoire, but really, she, like Michelle McCool, is nothing. They have been nothing. They will be nothing. 
Gil Kim basically took a squash in this fucking match. Maurice pretty much did nothing and laughed at the fact that fucking Gil Kim got her ass kicked. What was the point of having this on pay-per-view? I have no idea. Hmm, Chris Harris, Black Rain, much? <sighs> we get in a segment with Edge and William Regal, which, again, did not need to even be on this fucking pay-per-view. Um, you then had Miz and MVP for the United States title. That, that was alright. I, I can deal with that one. That one was okay, not just because I'm a Miz Mark or a Misfit, if you want to call it that. But this was fine. This, this was a fine little U.S. title match. Wasn't going to save the pay-per-view, but who the fuck cares? It's fine for what it is. Let, we'll let it go. And, of course, Miz came out on top. Again, because MVP should not even be in this fucking position. And then you've got the main event, which was the Elimination Chamber for SmackDown, which was Undertaker defending it against John Morrison, uh, R-Truth, your Messiah, CM Punk, Rey Mysterio, and who the fuck else was in it? Chris Jericho. All right. Fucking, this match, this match was the best match of the card, by far. This, in my opinion, was the best Elimination Chamber since the 2005 one. Um, I mean, I can't really complain about this match. And th this is where I want to get off. Shawn Michaels came out at the end, super kicked Undertaker, obviously, leading up to Undertaker, HBK, WrestleMania, again. Now, this is coming from somebody who over-critiques their first match, who critiques their freaking storyline in the beginning. There is no reason that people should hate this. Nobody should be hating this fucking build-up to this freaking feud. This has been beautifully built. Coming from somebody who didn't want to see the first one. This has been beautifully built. This has been wonderfully built. And it's going to super... It's going to twist to it to make it interesting and not just a random, I'm going to beat your streak because I'm different than the other guys. And then Undertaker goes ahead and beats their streak. Undertaker actually puts his streak on the line and Shawn Michaels is putting his career on the line, as you saw on Raw just tonight. It's wonderful build-up. And people are saying that the freaking match is not going to live up to the first one and it's going to tarnish it. Does anybody seem to forget that HBK versus Razor Ramon happened at WrestleMania 10 in a ladder match, and that's considered a five-star match? Does anybody remember they had a rematch at SummerSlam 95? Ladder match? Intercontinental title? Same stipulation? And it still turned out to be good? Maybe not as good as the first one, but it still turned out to be great? You can make the argument, oh, well, Undertaker's in pain. He's been in pain for the last six fucking years. He's been in pain for six fucking years. You mean to tell me that Shawn Michaels is not going to be able to carry him to somewhat of a good match? Are you kidding me? Are you fucking... I mean, he was able to carry Ramon to a five-star match. And all he did was wrestle a fucking ladder. And Ramon just happened to be watching in the ring while it was going on. And he decided to participate in somewhat. But, whatever the case, Elimination Chamber, as much as I have been ranting on it, was not the worst pay-per-view of the year or was worse than No Way Out, because in my opinion, No Way Out last year sucked. But this pay-per-view was just okay. It had a great Elimination Chamber, which I'll give it that. But it also had a fucking b and Pain Olympics match in fucking Michelle McCool and Layla versus Gail Kim and Marie Soulet. That was fucking abysmal to watch. Really abysmal. And you also had a boring cluster fucking nobody gives a shit Kane and Drew McIntyre. I don't fucking know. I'm sorry, I'm just in a pissed off mood, not because of the pay-per-view, not even because of Raw, just because of other things, but I decided to get my thoughts out of the way. So if anybody was offended by this, I deeply apologize. I just wanted to get my anger out, and this was the only way to do it, by ripping on Elimination Chamber, which wasn't really the worst pay-per-view to ever see, but it wasn't the best either. I'll catch y'all later.